Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about the four areas of biotechnology. So with this, you will have a Google document that you will fill out while I go through the PowerPoint, or you can do it at the end, that's up to you. Um, but this video will be there at all times for you to use as a resource. So agriculture and biotechnology, so agricultural. So how is agriculture and biotechnology used together hand in hand um, using biotechnology to improve how we produce food and fiber. So whether you believe this or not, but the food that we eat and how we raise our animals and our livestock is through biotechnology. Environmental biotechnology is going to be using biotechnology to help reduce our negative impact on the environment. So environment, okay, environmental, how can we reduce that impact? Okay, and then consumer goods biotechnology is using biotechnology to improve products um, that we as consumers buy and use every day. And then, of course, the medical biotechnology, using biotechnology to improve the medical field and our health. So here are some products um, of biotechnology that we use. So agricultural biotechnology, um, customizing the genetic makeup of crops. So what happens is we, or not we, scientists will use the genetic makeup of a certain crop or of crops so that way they can use them so that way the plants can grow in dry or wet, hot or cold climates. So depending on what is needed, so for eastern North Carolina, we need crops that can grow in hot climates, okay, because you know in the summertime here it gets super, super hot. So they we need crops that are able to withstand that heat okay and then animal feed products to enhance um, with proteins to boost nutrition and control diseases so just like humans get sick um, animals get sick as well so if we have um, proteins to boost that nutrition it's going to keep those diseases down it's going to be able to allow that animal to fight off diseases um, inserting genes for therapeutic proteins into crops like tobacco and corn and soybeans. Um, and we'll see here what that means. And so it is proteins engineered in a lab for pharmaceutical use. So for example, this is how we get insulin. Okay, producing insulin for people with type 1 diabetes using plants instead of bacteria cultures. So we are using plants to get us the insulin that we need for type 1 diabetes. So theoretically, um, biotechnology is something that's kind of interesting to kind of see how it works and how you can use this part of the plant but get insulin from it, okay? So that's pretty cool to watch. Um, so some examples is corn with BT um, gene. That BT gene is going to help the corn protect, protect the corn, okay, from an earworm. So what that does, that earworm does, is it gets on the corn and it basically sucks the life out of it. Um, but that's what the earworm is for, okay? So it is an insect that will infest your corn. And it will not give you any um, corn for harvest. So then Roundup Ready Cotton. Um, this is something we see a lot. Uh, if you drive down 55, there used to be signs that said Roundup Ready Cotton cotton there or Roundup Ready corn. Um, they're doing a lot with the Roundup Ready. So it is resistant to applications of Roundup herbicide, which is used to kill weeds. So basically what can happen is you will plant your corn or your cotton into the field and then as the weeds grow, because it's Roundup Ready, you can spray, you can spray that herbicide and it will not kill your plant. It will kill the weeds, but it won't kill your plant. And then um, using the naturally occurring hormone, such as BST, to improve the amount of milk cows can produce. Okay, so this is so our cows can produce the amount of milk that, you know, us as humans consume. Okay, because, you know, there's a lot of people that consume and drink a lot of milk. We use a lot of milk in our products. Um, and so sometimes we may not have enough or the cows cannot produce enough milk to get what we need. Um, using methane producing bacteria to heat homes in third world countries. Um, so they'll use your animal waste, which has methane in it, okay? And then, of course, it will go to that generator, and then that generator will turn it into a um, 
producing heat for that house. Sewage plants con collecting methane gas um, to fuel generators or air compressors. This is something that we're kind of seeing more and more of. Um, I know a place in New Bern is taking turkey litter and converting it to gas and using it as a energy source. So environmental biotechnology is all about improving the bio environment. Then you have fungus, um, using fungus to break down wood preservatives. So we put um, preservatives on wood to keep them from um, deteriorating for t to help protect for termites or insects or diseases that may be there. Um, and so we have to have something that can break the wood down once you're done using it. So they have started using fungus to do that. Um, using microbes to clean up wastewater before it enters streams and lakes. This is a way for them not to use chemicals and all that kind of stuff. So that's a way for that. Um, using microbes to clean up fuel spills from gas stations. So it is actually a microbe which is made from biotechnology, okay? Um, and you'll just spray it, not spray it, you'll put it on the spill, okay, and then it'll eat it. The microbes will work and get rid of it. Um, using oil-eating bacteria to help clean up major oil spills in oceans and shorelines. So if you ever experience or you're ever around or listening to the news and there is an oil spill, um, that is a big thing because there is wildlife that lives in the ocean. Um, and so the faster we can get that oil spill cleaned up, then the easier and the more wildlife we can save. So using the bacteria to help clean up those oil spills actually benefits both those ba that bacteria and the microbes that are in there. Um, this is where Miss Wallace comes in because she's lactose intolerant. So consumer goods for biotechnology making lactate milk products with an enzyme lactase. This means that there is no lactose in it, which is what makes most people sick. Um, I would not be able to drink what they call regular milk. Um, it is regular milk. It just doesn't have any lactose in it. Um, I wouldn't be able to drink it. I would have to just strictly drink almond or oat milk or something like that. So I'm thankful for biotechnology for that. I'm using fermentation to produce an abundant of pepsin, which is for cheese production. So... Cheese is like a whole process, um, and so with biotechnology and the fermentation, um, because that's where fermentation started was in biotechnology, we are able to create cheese. Laundry detergent that is more effective because of the additional of enzymes and their active ingredients. Um, so a lot of you people, you guys probably were not don't really know what OxyClean is, but growing up, that's all my mom would use on my softball uniforms, on my grass stains, anything like that. So in order for those to break down those stains, they need enzymes in those, in that um, laundry detergent to help break down those molecules. So that's where that comes in. Fruit juices that are made using with enzyme um, that breaks the pulp down into juice. So in order to get juice, you have to have that. And then contacts lens cleaners. Um, so those of you that may wear contacts, um, it's going to have that contact cleaner. It's going to have enzymes to break down the proteins. And then using amino acids for microbes to make the equal sweetener. So that is like a zero calorie sweetener. Um, it's an artificial sweetener. Alright, so now since this is the end, okay, so you guys are going to make sure you fill out your notes and then tomorrow you will do the four areas of biotechnology worksheet and it will be on your Canvas course and you are welcome to refer back to this lecture at any point. It should stay open. If it does not, then shoot me an email and I will fix that, but it should stay open because this is your resource to be able to use, okay? If you have any questions, just send us off an email.